Hi, I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting, and today I'm back with a really cute little design that I think is perfect for a baby's first birthday, possibly even a tiny baby shower, or for a small child's birthday we're having a small party. So this cake is just a six inch round and a cupcake on top with this little mini Barbie. Now she's actually Chelsea, but she's in the real Barbie line of dolls. And I just found her at the line at the grocery store and I thought, oh my gosh, she would make such a cute little doll cake. So I happened to put her on top of another little cake, but she really would be perfect all on her own if you just wanted to use the doll and the cupcake. I can't wait to show you how to do this one, so let's get started. Hey, one quick thing before we get started, I want to say congratulations to all of those who entered last month's Daffodil Design Challenge. And a big shout out to Huda Mahmood from Greece who won. Huda will be receiving a piece of my original jewelry in the mail soon. So congrats Huda and everyone else who joined. I am so proud of you guys. You are amazing decorators. So I appreciate so much that you joined the challenge. So this month's challenge is a daffodil design. So enter at The Art of Frosting on Facebook with a daffodil design. Now I will link the daffodil video at the end. The daffodil does need to be done piped on. So no fondant or gum paste, please. Um, some type of buttercream, whipped cream, whipped topping, something like that. You get the idea. So watch for that video right at the end. It'll be right at the end clip. You can click right on it or you can find it at The Art of Frosting on Facebook. Can't wait to see what you guys all come up with. For today's project, I'm starting with a single six inch round that has been torted or cut in half three times and filled. I'm also starting with a cupcake size little mini cake. This is done with a two inch pan. I've got just a little paintbrush, the inside of a paper towel roll, just cut in half, some parchment paper. I'm gonna use some candy melts. These are from Wilton, and they're basically a white chocolate colored candy. And we're using a mini Barbie doll. This happens to be Barbie brand, and she is Chelsea. Starting with just a two and a half inch piece of parchment, and you see how it kind of has the natural roll from the tube. We're going to use that to our advantage. You wanna start by putting just a little bit of your candy melt down to hold it down. You can do this on a tray if you want to. I'm just gonna do it right here on my countertop. So you wanna hold it down to start. And then you wanna just create a little elliptical shape with your candy melt. And then fill in just a little. Then I'm gonna come back in with my paintbrush and just smooth it out. Now the reason I'm doing this is I want it to have a little bit of a streaked effect of paintbrush and I want it to be really thin. My outside thick edges will give my support if I want it. And then you can come back in and actually give it a center vein if you want to. Or you can just leave it like it is. Then when you have about five or six of these and make more so they'll break, you just pop up your parchment that's holding it down and it'll actually create that shape. If you don't get that shape or as much of that shape as you want, you just slip it right in your tube and it'll give it that nice little shape. And then you just set this aside. It'll usually dry in about four or five minutes, but you can also put it directly in your fridge for a couple of minutes and it'll harden right up. The end result are these pretty little petals and you can see how sheer they are. Now I don't normally cut a big hole in advance when I'm doing a Barbie cake but I wanna be able to decorate this and put my Barbie in kind of last. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my shape. Now I'm not cutting a hole. I'm cutting kind of a rectangle because that's really her shape and I don't want the hole to be bigger than her body. So this is really just about one inch by a half and then just take out that center. Next, we're just gonna place our little cupcake size two inch cake right here in the center. And you kind of wanna eyeball, or you could even measure, just make sure she's nice and centered. 
So I've got a number 127 rose tip. It's a very large rose tip. Or you can use any large rose tip you have. And I just want to create a ruffle. But I'm going to create this ruffle at an angle, coming out away from my little cake and not straight down. You can see that it's almost creating little petals, which is perfect. So I'm just using a squeeze, let it drop, and back up technique. And there you can see I've created the bottom of her skirt. I brought my rose tip down to the base where I'm going to use the same technique here. It's just a squeeze, let it build and release, angling on to the platter. So it's creating a whole skirt at the base of the cake as well. Next, I put the little doll down to just about her upper thigh here. You can see that her upper thigh and her little hips are sticking out. And we want it that way so that we can create a skirt for her and not have such a big wide space. So I've got my number 127 again, and I want to be really careful to become to be not get too thick and come just above her waist, which means I need to be aware of my uh, pressure control. Right as I come back, I need to really release and make that small. We're just creating another layer of skirt. Next, I need a little space to mount our petals. So what I'm going to do right at her hips is I've just got a parchment bag, which is the tip cut off, and I'm just going to create little balls right around the waist. It's just going to be a squeeze, let it build and release. And what's kind of cute about it is it actually looks like, almost like little stamen. So she looks even more like a little flower. You can see I've started adding some yellow. I've just got a parchment bag filled with some yellow. Now this is where you have to use a very delicate hand. I'm just putting some tiny yellow dots. I want to continue the look of a flower and I thought these little tiny dots would look very pretty in here and continue that effect. But you have to squeeze very lightly and release otherwise this could get really clumpy and kind of ugly fast. I want to come just up to the top of her bodice line as I think I want to do just a little different effect over the shoulder. And then bring your hands down back down so you can work on her shoulders. I'm just going to come up across the shoulder with a zigzag, but I want it to look like a little ruffle shoulder. Come down and stop. And I come back across the other side. I think I want to come back in and give a little accent. Just take that peach and just do a little tiny accent there and a little tiny accent there. There we go. Next, I want to add some big, beautiful garlands. And I'm going to start in the center right under her. So we've got some balance. I'm going to just going to mark where she is. And double check that that looks like the front to me. And you want these to be also about two and a half inches. And then you just begin your delicate zigzag thicker in the center and thinner on the upper sides. We're being careful to cut for cut some of our rough edges of our ruffle there with our nice thick zigzag and also to create some interest up the side of our cake. My next step, since this is a little girl's cake, is I want to repeat our flower motif. So I'm just going to make some daisies. I'm just taking my parchment full of yellow and I'm making basically the shape of a shell border. Squeeze, let it build and release. Squeeze, let it build and release to the center. So I've got a nice little daisy shape and I'm just going to put my peach right in the center. And we're going to create those all the way around at the peaks of our garlands. And you want to let it come down right onto the garland. Notice that they go up over the edge of my cake here and down onto the garland. So they're bringing the two worlds, the upper cake and the lower cake together. I want to add just a little touch of green 
just a squeeze and a release. And what I like to do is go all the way around one way and then all the way around the other. And what I've done is I've reused my bag of yellow and just added a stripe of green in it. And you may have noticed, though I didn't mention it before, that I did color stripe my peach bag for my ruffles. Of course I did. It's me, guys. I color striped everything. So I didn't forget our pretty little candy melt petals. I just want to put them on last so they don't break while I'm jostling around the rest of the cake. So you just want to take those and bring them in and place them wherever feels right to you. I really like them standing up like a daisy, but you could actually angle them downward or even turn them upside down like this so that they're a petal that goes down the front of her dress. So it's a good idea when you have a new design like this to take a look at the doll at all directions. So I kind of took a look at her and I decided to angle her back petals up just a little more and her front petals down ever so slightly. I like the way it looked. You can even angle these little petals, turn them more towards the front. Now this little doll came with a pretty little teapot and I'm gonna give that back to her and put it on her dress because it's kind of cute. And that's really it. So I hope you like this one. I think it was so sweet and a lot of fun, and I think you'll find a million uses for it. Don't forget that you can share all of your photos with me on Facebook at The Art of Frosting. Also, you can find a whole body of work on my blog, www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com. So if you're looking for a cake idea, go there. All of the videos are attached to It's a good resource. Also, you can now find me at Etsy, E-T-S-Y.com at the Woodshop TV, where you can find many of my pieces of jewelry for sale there. So many of you have asked for that, as well as many that come from Carl Jacobson from the Woodshop TV channel. If you haven't checked him out yet, go there. He's got all kinds of really cool projects. So the jewelry is at the Woodshop TV on Etsy.com. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate every view. Keep your eyes open. This month is wedding month and graduation month, so a lot more to come. See y'all again soon.